Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4 and today spawning in the southwest corner map playing in blue we've got Beastie Cutie playing as the Ottomans and his opponent in the northeast playing in red. We have got 3DB playing as the Malians. Welcome everyone to Gorge. That's the map for today. One of my most favourite maps I've got to say. B coming home though with no sheep. It's a very aggressive scouting pattern for the Ottomans and Beastie and well it's paying off for him. Either way, I hope you guys are having a great morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and having a fantastic time, and I just want to say a very big thank you for everyone who's supporting the channel. You guys are absolute legends. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've been uh, having some great fun in Age of Empires 4. We've seen some great games, and be picking up the first sheep uh, as we speak. I wonder if he's gone for an early military score. Fact, ooh, hello. He's gone for an early barracks. Okay, interesting. Going to be getting the spearman numbers out nice and quickly at a timing that maybe B wouldn't have anticipated, right? Like, sometimes you get the Ottomans getting a uh, military school just to get a couple of spearmen, but it's relatively slow. Uh, this is going to put some pressure on B, actually. I think this is a nice play. Like, the Ottomans versus Marlins matchup is really an interesting one. Like, you've got the Ottomans that they pack a punch in sort of the feudal age, but I don't know. I've got to say, you know, you know, in this most recent patch, a lot of the feudal age heavy sieves have kind of tailed off a little bit. It just feels like, you know, Marlins, they can do okay against this. It just, it's been figured out, right? Like, an extended feudal age between the Marlians and the Ottomans, it feels good for the Marlians. They've got some you know, good eco bonuses, some passive gold coming in from the pit mine. They can slowly get a cow boom going. going. Doesn't have to be too crazy about the cow boom. Just just one mil every so often, add a cow extra. It can be really strong to get the food coming in passively. The Ottomans, on the other hand, their, their bonuses isn't all that great, right? They get the military school, which is pretty decent. Get free units, but I'm not sure. I think if you're going to want to choose between economy versus free units, maybe economy would be better. Spearman numbers continuing to, to move on out. Yeah, Beast, you're really going for it. And I think it makes a lot of sense because, you know, as the Ottomans, you kind of want to stop the Marlians. You want to you want to make them make units, right? You want to force the Marlians to make units. I think this is generally quite a hard matchup, though, because... I mean, the man is making units. Again, they've got such good units in the feudal age. Got some really unique ones. Of course, the javelin throw is great against archers. You got the uh, the dontos, uh, probably one of the best spearman line units in the in the game for sure. So uh, I'm pretty excited to see how B plays this one out. It's going to go up to the next stage with the Mansa Quarry. Sometimes you do see the Sultan Hani trade network, but I'm not opting for that today. I think the benefits of the Mansa Quarry is just it's just too good to to give up, right? Wait, is this okay it's just going down really slowly there's not too much torch damage coming out of the spearman i gotta say it's a very heavy investment for beastie he's going for an outpost as well holy moly the ottomans are outpost rushing not anticipated this at all and i mean to be fair this is a lot of pressure coming on in kind of excited to see this we saw hre outposting rushing these days we're starting to see the ottomans do it too forcing out the repairs somewhat for the Malians. I'm going to focus on the houses first. And I think that's sensible because it would take a bit too long to take the pit mine down, right? Village coming out to repair within the range of the town centre, thankfully for B. But the village is going to come in relatively soon for B and now. The Ottomans, on the other hand, uh, they're going to, going to take some time. That's for sure. I've got to say, the sheep numbers that BC's been picking up, it's super impressive. I, I kind of feel bad for B's situation. I don't think he has that many. Can't do, right? It uh, doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it at all. Just as well as got a lot of sheep. A lot of houses burning down and there is that tech up now. He's got that. He's getting the archer range as you'd expect and villager heading back home now for the Ottomans. Can I go with the Twin Minaret Madrese? No real surprises there. Great landmark for some food coming on in for the Ottomans. Safe and secure and pretty fast gather rate too. The miners have to back off to the north, which is probably relatively predictable in terms of the way maps spawn. So that could be a focus for Beastie to try and challenge as time wears on. Getting the houses first. Of course, having to replace the houses that have been lost. But definitely great opening here for Beastie. He's part on some pressure. It's exactly what you want to do, the Marlins, and does have the mill. Cowboom continues. 
Although, probably just going to eat this one, to be fair. First pit mine. About to go down. Just a little bit more time for the Twin Minaret Madrasa, but we're getting there for the Ottomans. Oops, we haven't dived a little bit too too close for that. Is the berry rangeable? Oh, that berry bush is just about takeable for the Malians. Oh, he's going on to turn for a second town center. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Because the thing is about going for second town center, like booming up against the Malians, they're always going to be able to outboom you. It just their power spike with the cow boom is super strong in the castle age and then you've got passive god generation anyway i mean in one way it will give them some extra food although speaking of food just got an antolian hills as a vizier point getting extra sheep uh, this is curious like it makes a lot of sense in one ways in the sense that if you stay one town center then it's kind of an all-in sort of approach as the ottomans Questions whether they can make a second town centre work or not it's gonna have to be aggressive where it's placed possibly on the deer camp of wood here that could be an option Maybe if he wants to be really expansive, this is a, like a crazy spot, right? Gold, berries, and deer camp. And a bit of wood to boot. Of course, he knows that the villagers and gold miners will be heading out north, but... Javan throws deal with that. Uh, although, having said that, it might not be a second town center. He just might be looking to get um, military schools nice and early. That could be an option, and probably it's probably what's happening, to be fair. Probably just wants those military schools ASAP. We'll have to see. Double archer range and barracks. So B opting for a relatively heavy feudal age as the mines is a very strong approach. That is for sure. Oh, this house is actually on fire. The outpost has been upgraded, both in terms of strength and also arrow slits. Yeah, it looks like... Wait. Wait, it does look like a second town center actually. Considering the wood income, yeah, he is. It's going to go for the gold to protect that. And B spots this straight away, of course, with this scout. And not that necessarily is a problem. It's not going to be able to deny it. But now that might mean B could be aggressive actually in the feudal age. We shall see. It's kind of crazy how roles have reversed, right? It's like maybe now the man is a switch and be aggressive. Donzo is heading forward now to put some pressure on. Beastie. This is kind of interesting, like he's not really utilizing the military schools, which is probably a big, big bonus that the Ottomans get. Second town side does go up, garrisons villages inside, and yeah, Don says Javan throws have to back away. Should lose the sky here, I think. Does he get it? He does get it indeed. Heading down south, they're going to get some value, but I mean, everything's pretty tightly packed on this map. Woodland relatively close to the town centre, but it is very predictable one particular spot. Just going to relocate that lumber camp, because he does know that the army is heading that position, Beastie. He knows that the Javan Throws and Donzos are there. Well, it's kind of interesting as well, though. The second town centre play for the Ottomans does mean that the Marlins could look to get those extra pit mines, right? On the map. Yeah, he's doing it now as we speak. Makes a lot of sense. And it's going to be a bit of a lag time before Beastie can produce units again easily. Well, they might even be thinking about going to the Castle Age. That's kind of crazy. Grouping up together. And it's going to go for some rams. So, yep, definitely going to be heavy if you lay pressure coming up. With only seven garrison spots and very little military to defend with, Beastie could be in a lot of trouble. It's not looking good. We'll see how much value that B can get, though. Not diving in too quickly, just wants to wait for Iron Under Mesh, ideally, I think. And then it's going to push on. Maybe not. It's just going to go straight in. It's going to garrison. Oh, B doing the old B trick. He loves doing this. It's such a kind of fun to watch because if the villagers come and torch out, oh, pop out the jam throws, poke and prod and shoot. And it's garrison inside. We're going to see a bit of a hop, hop in, help out action here. There you go. I'll try his best to torch it down. <laughs> you got to love this, right? 
I think the town center is just it's not that great anymore these days on the HP front of things. So we'll go down to even one RAM, would you believe? It's crazy to think about. Torches, to be fair, with the Donsos, they are helping for sure. Second town center is down, and ultimately, I mean, BC didn't get any value from that at all. Having lost five villagers. Well, I tell you, he'll, he will get some value from it. Is the, the castle age. Memon Imperial Armory. That's going to be difficult for for B to deal with, actually. He's going to go for double barracks, so mana, triple barracks. In fact, mana at arms coming up for the Ottomans. i got to say, recently, mana at arms has been a really strong unit for the Ottomans. It scales super well, and uh, they've been making a lot of them. Bear in mind as well with the heavy infantry based army, the Mehmed, the, sorry, the, um, yeah, the Mehmed Imperial Armory is going to be a great landmark for them. You have to get those mangonels. That's exactly what he needs. And I'm going to take on some production buildings. Second ram is out now for the Malians. Going to try and stab out a couple of villagers. Beastie needs to be careful not to lose too many. But he is starting to get the man at arms, right? And the key bit of detail is if he can keep that gold safe and secure. Wait, wait, no, he can't because look at this. Right in the far front position. And we've got 250 gold banked up. So that'll be okay for now. But it doesn't feel like enough. He's got the gold in the south. Actually, to be fair, he's got gold. He's absolutely fine for now. Does lose one ram, by the way. Trying to get another one out. Jam throws picking away a couple of those man at arms. In the end, I mean, Beastie will need some good numbers of mana times before he really pushes out. The B, like, there's no real sign of him going to the castle edge, and I worry about that. Because uh, he'd have to rely on Musa Fali Warriors. Yeah, he's getting them now. That will help against the, the, the mana times, but whether he's got enough here, B, I'm not so sure to deliver a killer blow. One thing that could work quite well, though, is if he can keep up the pressure. You know, the sheep numbers for Beastie. Yeah, it's not. It's, to be fair, he's got a lot of sheep. Holy smokes, he's got 15. He's going to be alive for a while with that food, i got to say. I think Antonin Hills has worked really well for him. Because without that food, he would have to venture out to deer camp or get a farming transition, which is, of course, the last thing he would want. Javan Throwers doing their best against the Mana Tiles, but I think we've got to the stage where there's a decent number of those Mana Tiles. Donsos might tank that front line, but in fact, the Javan Throwers are just going to kite this a little bit. I think it's four shots, then. That's a lot of shots needed to take it out one Mana Tile. Going to have to rebuild another ram. They're turning some stables. Here come the Knights, the Lancers. That's going to be problematic. Plenty of gold in the bank. Might need to think about going to the deer camp actually. It's kind of food I'm struggling with, Beastie here. But he's, oh god, okay. Farming transition coming out for the Marnians. That's tricky, right? Because you're going for like a really quite heavy feudal age push here, but you kind of have. Oh god, he's got farming transition. That's going to really delay the unit production. Obviously, he's got a decent number of units anyway, but with the Manganel just about to pop out, pops out now. He has to get out of there. Garrison inside there, B, so he notices at the right time. Here comes a relic being deposited in. Got two in the grasp so far. Let's see if it does engage. Those imams might actually start to heal up these units. Well, they might come out. There is a mangonel, though. Jump throw is getting hit massively. B, oh, I'm not so sure about this push coming. It does take out another barracks. There are three rams after all. A couple of Safari warriors, but they're going to get decimated by the town centre fire, really. 15 villagers garrison inside. Maganel going to start to unpack and fight. Yep, Moose Valley Warriors are going to die in an instant. Oh, this is a good pick off there by the Javan Throwers. A couple of villagers being pushed away and sniped. Might send some more army there potentially. We shall see. I think the villagers can now come out and torch. Yeah, they're doing just that. There's not too much more value going to come out of the rams, I'm afraid. But he's done some damage. Whether it's enough or not, I'm not so sure. I don't think it is. And I wonder what B is up to in terms of... Yeah, it's not, no cattle boom. It's just all farms. That's a bit rough. Doesn't have the gold really for it. Here comes the first of Lancers. Maybe many more to come. There's a second. Going to chip away at the, uh, the Jam Throws. Going to take out the Musifali Warriors as well whilst they're still quite low in number. But yeah, Beastie's economy is kind of in tatters at the moment. Being pulled in every sort of direction. But B, it's got to be careful not to overcommit in the Feud Age. And think about Castle Age if he feels strong about the army he's got. Of course, he would need a good standing army, but also maybe some static defenses, especially when you're up against Manganels. It does look like he's heading back now, though. 
And this is rough, right? Because now that B is still in the feudal age, if he does decide to tech up, it's going to mean less units on the field, means less map control, means that the 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 imams for the Ottomans might actually get those relics inside a mosque relatively soon. Still a couple more darted across the map, dotted across the map. PC just sending one Lancer. Mr. Fadi Wari will take care of that, but did lose a villager or two. Oh, Musafari Warriors, they must have stealthed their way through, but there's a decent number of man at arms, even though the Musafari Warriors technically count them. There's a Manganel! That pushes that back away. Great game of Age of Empires 4 so far. Mass units from the Malians. We do see B doing this a lot of the times, staying in the age behind, but massing up units. Oh, Manganel. Will he get shot off? Does get the shot off. Oh, does actually land that, surprisingly enough. I wasn't expecting that to happen because it felt like forever before the boulders came down to the ground. They've got the hit lances around the back there on the wood line. B going to lose a couple of villages here, potentially. He's only lost one so far, which is quite surprising. Make that two now. Mitavari Warrior is chasing that down. Whereas Beastie's lost 16 in total, but it did have that second down set earlier, to be fair. This is so weird to see farms coming out for the Malians. Oh, go for stone, Beastie. Maybe he's going to get a keep, actually. That could be quite critical. I think that's the big danger for Beastie, right? If he gets a keep, he's going to keep his economy safe and secure. And uh, he's not going to be too worried about any sort of further feudal age push coming in. A keep will be too hard to push by B. A couple more lances. Musafari warriors, they're backing away. Oh, no, he's got a couple of Musafari warriors chasing. Might be able to take the Lancer out, maybe. We shall see. Another ram? Made at home? B, he's not given up on that plan. I'm not so sure it's going to work. It's going to get another two military scores. Going to crank out those units soon. And as long as BC has a good standing army, I've got to say, this is kind of scary, right? Because the Ottomans, another real big power spike is the Imperial Age with the Great Bombard. Get a couple of those out. Can spell disaster. Of course, we're way, way away from that. But a keep defensively could be really critical for the Ottomans. It's kind of a, a nice way to do this because he's going to get free units anyway. So might as well spend the uh, villager gathering on things you can't get from the military schools. And one of those things are keeps, of course. We'll eventually take down their outpost and that's what the ram was built home for. With the Grand Fulani Coral, which is an interesting choice seeing he's got no cattle there. Might be looking to get that on later in the game. We shall see. Yeah, I think this point now, the game comes really about how much Beastie can deny gold from the Malians. The, of course, the economy for the Malians is very heavily focused on gold. He did actually replace another town centre in the end, instead of a keep. Interesting. He really wants to play that macro game. He's lost a lot of villagers, though, so he's behind. So I guess, anyway, that's probably his say, way of saying I need to catch up, right? Because if he doesn't catch up with the second town centre, he's probably going to be dead. As time wears on. The meta getting involved, man at arms, Sapahi for the Ottomans, and I think B is opting. I mean, if, yeah, well, he's got to the car stage now, but he's going to be opting for a big push in the car stage as well, it seems. He's got a lot of military, right? If he can wait for the tech ups and then push on in, that could be problematic for, for the Ottomans, although Beastie keeping his enemy at home, this is huge actually. Look how many Mr. Fanny Warriors are being sent for this. And the reason why this is so important is it allows Beastie to get those free units, right? As time wears on. He's getting a lot of free units, and he's actually going to be making... I mean, that's a that's a third Manganel, guys. That is massive. That's super difficult for the bee to take care of. And maybe he can go for Sofa, potentially. Maybe he can go for some Spring Orbs. Either way, it's going to be a tough ask. Beastie. Just getting an outpost in the forward position. Look to protect that area. Well, Lance is getting hit a few times. He's got to be careful, BC, but he's got three of the relics. This is where things become really scary, right? B committed a lot to that feudal age and uh, doesn't really have a great economy because of it. Cows are going to be built now and put into the ranch, so that will that will scale that food economy, but I now expect the Mardis to have a lot more food in the bank, or at least coming on in. 
I took about half of what the Ottomans are getting right now. Even capping the sacred sites doesn't bother Beastie. Going to pick up basically a five relic game. That's massive. If he gets all five relics, that's going to be really tough for the Marnies to push. We talk about free gold coming in from the pit mines, but well, the relics coming in for the Ottomans. Getting siege workshop. It's kind of what you need. I, I, this is one of the reasons why I love the Ottomans. Actually, they force your enemy to do a lot of a lot of things they maybe don't want to. Because the Mehmed Imperial Armory gives you the you know, the Manganals, forces your enemy into spring orts, and then you've got you know, it's like the Janissary in case the enemy goes cavalry. So basically, it forces the enemy away from cavalry at times. It means it limits their mobility. It's really smart. It's really interesting. How's it going, making Ivan on Twitch? Hope you're doing well, buddy. Modelo. Just as a distraction. Stonewall's coming off a beast. Yeah, okay. I, I think this is interesting because he's going to play for the Imperial Age. Now, the Marlins don't have a bad Imperial Age themselves, by the way. Like, they've got really good population efficiency from the cows and the passive generation from gold. So, population efficiency is super good for the Marlins. I'll tell you what's not great, though. The fact that he's having to send so many units to deal with this is exactly what Beastie wants. It just gives him time to breathe, right? Beastie knows he's ahead. Like, he knows he's got more relics. He probably feels confident in his macro ability. He's got two town centers. So the longer this game goes on, I think even with the cow boom and the uh, the pit mines, I think I think I think Beastie and the Ottomans should be feeling confident. Especially with the harassment coming in the north. A question is whether I'm casting Beast of the Hill. I might cast some of the like the, the nice games or the games that I felt like the matchups that looked cool. Because there are some matchups. Um, so, guys, if you're watching on YouTube later on, if you don't know, uh, BCQT is hosting a tournament or has hosted a tournament. And so that's what, yeah, it's called uh, Beast of the Hill. So, I might cast some of the games that I think were, you know, relatively even matchups. You know, you had some players that are just a lot more better than others, and certain matchups where it's just it going to end in one direction, right? So, as you guys might know by now on YouTube and on Twitch, I do usually sort of uh, hand pick the games I cast. I say hand pick, like, I don't necessarily think about who won, I just think about the matchups and the map. And the game duration, because if it's a game that's ending in 10 minutes, then it's usually not that exciting. So yeah, maybe we'll pick up some uh, games and see who played today and if there's any decent ones or not. But I've got some cracking games like lined up for today. I'm not so sure if I get them all done today, but we shall see. Does decap that sacred site in the middle. Now with four relics in play, with this one uh, relatively close by, it could be problematic. Ooh, good first few hits with the, the veteran... Safari Warriors and Donsos. Supply have to back away. I think generally here for the Marlins, like a heavy infantry play can be okay, but he's got to be able to deal with the Mangonels. Like he's got four of them now. This is where it becomes really tricky for the Marlins to deal with this. Four Spring Lords? I mean, you're going to need like eight, sorry, four Mangonels. You're going to need at least like eight Spring Lords to be able to one-shot it quickly. Otherwise, you will suffer some da uh, damage, some, some hits. He's only got one spring lord in total. He does have a mangonel of his own, which will help. And the concern is the man at arms, very heavy armored units. If they can get on top of uh, B's siege, it could be game over. Look at that, five mangonels, none of them have been paid for. Now you can see just the population efficiency, right, for B. Look at the food income, relatively neck and neck. But of course, you've got you know, 20 more villages on food for the Ottomans. Imagine that. About 20-odd villages saved by the fact there's got cattle boom going on. It's insane. So it's come before the storm, though. Might see an engagement soon. BC actually normally that population cap. So is B. B pushing on in. He's uh, feeling confident about the situation now, but the Mangadels for the Ottomans might start to deploy. Where are they? There they are. Slowly encroaching that position. It's going to take the fight now. Musafari Warriors need to take out the Vringing, vringing Guards, the amount of times if they can. And he's trying to do just that. Mangadel deploys, though, for the B, for B and Marlians. Same can be said for the Ottomans. I've got to say, Marlians actually got a good pickoff with the Mangadel. I mean, he lost it in the end, but 
Spy picking it off and gets another. This is a big pushback. This is what we talked about. There's just not enough siege there for the Malians and they were sniped big time. Man of Time still tanking there on the front line for Beastie, allowing the archers to do their thing on the back line. And as Magadels continue to creep forward, could unpack and do some significant damage. Three Springles not wanting to engage just yet. It feels like the Marlins are losing the units big time. He needs more. Now, he needs to stabilize B if he can. It's a big ass there. Springles do jump on in. Should be able to get one man get out. Possibly a second. No, he's going to back away for now. I think he just commits now. I think he has to trade, right? Has taken out two of the man Possibly a third. Does he get another hit on this? I'm not so sure. We'll have to see. He does get it in the end. Hey, if you can get another, another man get out, this could be huge, actually. Okay, yeah, sure. The miners will lose the units, but... Oh, God. Okay. Beastie's losing the siege big time. Behind all of this, though, Beastie might think about the Imperial Age. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. No. I wonder what he's going to go for. Is he going to go for the Imperial Observatory? or We'll have to see. Beastie, though, pushing into the heart of the Marlins' economy soon enough. There's not too much gap between him and the and the town centre anymore, Beastie. He's pushed on in. and I mean, that's a lot of javelin throws. Trying to snipe out the meta first so he reduces the attack speed of these units. Oh, so swap other colours there for a second. Wasn't intentional. Well, picks up the fifth relic. That could be massive. I think, yeah, I mean, the Ultimates are opting for the Imperial Age, right? He's not too far away from it. And I don't think the Marlins can punish it. He's behind on economy. Behind on military. Just suffered some big losses early on, B, and has found it difficult to, to recover. He's not far off now, though, Beastie. Veterans are coming in for the suffer. I mean, I, I don't know if I like it, right? Because it's such an easy switch for the Ottomans to go for Janissary and then your suffer is just absolutely useless. And he went for the veterans he upgraded. He's paid good money for it. He's also getting imported armor. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this. I think it's a it's a sink of resources for the Malians to go for suffer. He has to rely on Siege. He has to rely on the other units too. Heading almost into the 30th minute mark, and he's just going to deposit that fifth relic. A tithe barn's coming in now after he does get the village. Could be pretty epic. Tithe barns, of course, an upgrade that increases the food, wood, and stone for every minute of each relic. Hanging out to Plaza on the sofa, so he's aware of the situation, right? They're going to capture the sacred sites. Yeah, or maybe not. He loses his life here, the monk. The imam, rather. So still two mangonels. Well, the massive mangonel shots on the janitor. That's massive, actually, because if you can get rid of the... Uh, well, these are archers. If you can get rid of the ranged infantry unit here for the that the Ottomans had, that could be huge for the Malians, I've got to say. Oh, if he can snipe out a mangonel. does have three spring holes of his own. This could be huge. This could be game-defining. We'll have to see. Magana deploys on the back line. B charging on with the Sava. Backing away though to allow the Sapai some room. Javelin throwers focusing on the Sapai here. That's not ideal. Javelin throwers need to be focusing on the archers or the Janissaries if they can. But the Janissaries ripping through the cavalry. The Marlins can't push too quickly with those cavalry. And those the gaps are slaughtered. The Meta leading that front line. I think the Springle's coming in clutch here. I've got to say, it's saving him. Bit of a raid coming around the back. Nothing too major though. Imperial Age is now in place for the Malians. Opposite for the Istanbul Observatory. No real surprises there, although, yeah, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. He's pushing on in. Seven throws, mangonels. Oh, the economy is about to be idle there for Beastie, but, but, but bear one thing in mind. The resources being spent. These are on elite Sabahi. Elite archers. This is a problem for B. Like, even with the counter units, again, it's, he's an age behind. It's just the case, same case all game. He continues to send more units, trying to swarm and outnumber, but he doesn't have the Sacred Side victory ticking. So he's still going to have to kill his enemy outright. That's going to be tough to do. 
Here come the torches. Oh, this could be key. B trying to wall in his infantry and, and siege, really. And that could be fun. It'd be difficult for Springos to pop out and, and take them out. Mangano's deploy. Donso is about to get in position to try and protect Sabai. Trying to dive on in, but the Sabai won't be able to break through the Donso mouse, I don't think. Coming from the west side as well, trying a bit of everything. Be though holding firm for now, especially with this cavalry. I mean, there aren't as many Janissaries as there once was. And that's an issue. Magna Wonder goes down eventually. In fact, I think, yeah, he's still got two remaining, which is massive. Another one coming around the back. Try to snipe it, but look at that. They're repairing. Going to deploy from that side as well. So it's three Magnals again. It's so difficult for these Janissaries to hold their own. Up against three Magnals? I mean, what do you do? Apart from run. And get Seed, of course. I mean, B, he's burning things to the ground. There's no interest, it seems, going to the Imperial Age just yet. Uh, B needs to find a way to stabilize somehow, some way. He's got to stabilize. Got a cracking economy. It needs units now. They're on Janissaries, these guys. Oh, another batch of Mangonels. Maganel still getting some good value for B, I gotta say. Like, he's pushing on in. Now, with a lack of any other type of siege, he's gonna need to focus and just get rid of the military buildings and then. I mean, he's gonna take out the capital town center, to be fair. This could be huge. I mean, he does have three of the four landmarks in one screen. This could be problematic because actually getting raided around the back. Oh, Safa diving on in. Now, B's gonna fight with the villagers. And uh, I'm not so sure how I feel about that, although the Janissar is getting involved. So Janus will take care of that. Raining. Oh, we're getting keeping a forward position of his own on the stone and the gold. That could be massive. He's forcing the mines away from gold. And, well, that's going to be critical. But this is a problem. BC somehow has to stabilize him. Mean, does he have the army? He's going to group together. I mean, the Sofa, they're going to be chewed through those, uh, chewed by those Janissaries, I've got to say, really quickly. But... Big problem is he can't get too close to those Mangonels. B is in a really good spot. 63 military versus 45. Beastie's got the tech up in terms of Imperial Age. But it might not matter. But it's coming out to the gold. Oh, that gold is almost expiring now. Good thing he's got the keep in this. He's going to get more keeps. Okay, he's keep spamming. Beastie, he wants to stay alive in the game. We'll lose one Mangonel here. B. Oh, he's kind of caught here. I'm not so sure he, he led too far forward with the Mangonels. I know the Dossos get it right in time there. Sapai managed to stop off one Mangonel, but... Still three more remain. He's pushing on heavy. Donso's... They, they're pushing on through. Mangonel's continued to deploy. But it does have a spring when he's take care of that. B if he can. Does take care of it now. Beastie, if he can survive, he does still have a decent economy, of course. Five relics in play. Take up to the Imperial Age. It's not over just yet, but B needs to deliver some sort of killer blow here. Oh, keep it in the middle. That's going to be really important, actually. That's going to deny resources... Uh, reinforcements, rather, coming in. That's actually really important. Sofa diving on in. A good number of Donsos. He'll clear that up. BC really struggling on military numbers. He's still alive though as we speak. B though running right in the base. The keep does go up in the end. And that means reinforcements will be a little bit trickier to come in. Wait, B's going for a keep drop of his own. But take that goal that he kind of had no right in getting. But holy smokes, they're both going crazy on the map. I mean, this is going to be hard to track. I mean, they're just coming out to fight. Oh, wait, does this go off for B? Yeah, it goes off for B. He has to relocate. He's going to get another keep. I love this keep position actually for Beastie because what it does, it denies the gold being from gathered, right? And that's what it's all about. He wanted to secure those resources, B, but he won't be able to. He's going to get some rams on the front line to take this keep down because it is hampering the project progression, of course. Oh my god, that's so many villagers going down for Beastie on that wood line. Oh god. He's, he's killed 62 villagers. B coming with more outposts. This is an absolutely ridiculous game. I've got the tall outposts as well. Going to be that staging ground to attack. And it's the villagers coming out to try and... I mean, I think he should be okay, Beastie, to get this keep up. Wait, B! you got to get out of there! Wait! B! No! Run! B. Okay, setting some stuff for that to take care of the villagers at least, but... Got to get his own villagers out of there. No emplacements in the outpost just yet, so they're not all that relatively useful actually at this point. But uh, plenty of stone. 1,000 stone coming on in. Sofa taking care of those villagers... Jeez, B has killed 66 so far, but he's stabilizing Beastie, i got to say. I mean, if you can call this stabilizing, but... I mean, he is kind of stabilizing, right? Because, uh... He's in the Imperial Age. He's not 
losing too many more villagers. He's got some keeps around the map and he's, you know, could take... Well, he can't take the boar. I'm afraid the Ottomans can't take that type of food and he's getting the wood up north. Gold in the... Uh, where he's getting gold from at this point? He does have a gold vein he can take here. He's struggling on gold, but... The Great Bombard now. All these static defenses, the Todd Outpost will go in a blink of an eye. There's a second one coming out as well. And Divigate is going to get them for free from the Mehmed Imperial Armory. And this is where things become tricky for B, right? He's an age behind. It doesn't show any signs of going to the Imperial Age. Feels like his heart's stuck, but he doesn't have as much siege as perhaps he would want to take out infrastructure. He does have a couple of rams. It'll take some time to, to, to break through the walls. To break through uh, the, the production buildings and the walls on the right side. Keeping this gold vein very safe if Beast needs to take it. Slowly but surely though, B is pushing on ahead and pushing on through. B has enough stone for another keep. Maybe even two. I mean at this point gold is going to become critical, right? Beastie's got a good 4,000 gold vein here and a gold vein here. So 8,000 in total really to be gathered. And to be fair, he's got this gold vein that he could potentially take if he takes down the keep. B is going to struggle for gold. He's taking this gold vein forward, but other than that, he's kind of rough on gold. I think Beastie's done a great job of protecting the forward goals that he should never really have. Ram's going to try and you know, break through down this, uh, the keep. Does have boiling oil. And that is a lot of javelin throwers. But he's coming out to try and burn down and torch down the rams. He thought better of it, and it's going to dive underneath. I mean, with the great bombards there, this keep for the B is not going to stay up for too long, I don't think. It's going to be rough. There is two bombards. Oh, God. <laughs> Look how much damage comes out from the bombards. That keeps not going to survive much longer. And i got to say, Beastie, despite all the pressure he's been under, he's actually got good control of the gold spots. Yo, Lash, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the raid. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good stream and enjoyed casting today. Thank you so much. Welcome all in, Raiders. Hope you're doing well. And we're going to... Well, I mean, this has been a ridiculous game so far. You guys are coming at a good time, I've got to say. Almost 40 minutes on the clock. They've had a bit of a kind of a, not a base trade, but a, a kind of a gold trade, I guess. Like, the BC is taking this gold, which should be B's. Uh, to be fair, B's are kind of heavy military presence on the west side, but he, he's struggling to get gold. Well, he's getting from somewhere. Where is he getting from? Where is B getting his gold from? Ah, oh, here it is. Here it is. That's about to expire. As we speak, it does expire. So that's looking a bit problematic. Trying to take out the production buildings if, if he can. Now, I think B's got to secure gold, right? He's got to get hold of this gold vein. Like, there's still a good 4,000 in there. He's got to take it. Now, B almost at population capacity. I mean, at some point, he's going to need to go to the Imperial Age. Does he just... He doesn't have the bank of resources to do that at all. So the big concern is B is kind of on a timer, right? Uh, this is rough for B. I, I don't like his position because whilst he's being aggressive... He is up against the Imperial Age Ottomans. And it's going to be hard to push on with three bombards, four bombards. Like the splash damage coming out of that against his mass infantry. It's going to be hard to deal with. But B is still making some inroads. He's pushing on hard. I think I think B has to protect the relics actually at this point. This is a lot of resources coming on for free. But if he can hold this push, it doesn't feel like B's got another one in his locker. Feels like it's do or die at this time. If he doesn't win with this fight, this army... Not so sure how much more he can reproduce this army because he doesn't really have good access to gold. As I said, it just secured this one on the west side. So that'll last for some time. Tithe Barn's coming in now for Beastie. About 2k, 2000 gold out there on the right side. But yeah, this is where it's tricky. Like, he's uh, going to need to make a push down on the west side, but as time goes on, I think BC is going to be happy with the situation, because ultimately, he's in the Imperial Age and he's getting free units. What more could you want? Alright, well, looks like it will be the Imperial Age coming in now for B. But that does give a window of opportunity here for Beastie. Potentially to, to push on out. Looks like that's exactly what he's about to do. I mean, B should be able to upgrade his army if he can hold on. 
It's got a good amount of resources coming on in. This is where it becomes really tricky, right? We talk about how the Ottomans have a really strong late game, and it all comes down to the quality of army, the bombards, the man at arms, the janissaries. Whilst B's economy is very population and efficient with the the cow boom, this is where he's riding on. I mean, why why is he fighting now? He doesn't have the upgrades. I'm so I'm so I'm so confused. Is he not going to wait for the upgrades? He just teched up to the Imperial Age. He's not going to make any use of it. He's diving with the Donsos, and they don't get much value at all with the Bombards there. I think he just wants to try and hold on to the gold vein as long as possible, I guess. But in the blink of an eye, B about to lose his army before it's upgraded. I think now this is go time for Beastie. This is not looking good for B. Like, if Beastie pushes this position and denies this gold, that is going to be huge, because it's an expensive tech up, and doesn't really have the gold for upgrades even now at this point. Replacing those production buildings. Yep, 2k gold still left in there, but look how quickly this keeper's going to go down. Oh, Spring was kind of caught a bit. I'm not sure why they're heading so far forward. Uh, you know, jam throws. Gonna take some time to get those down for sure. Keep keep us down. And Beastie's gonna piss his position. Yeah, I'm and Beastie's in, in is in a good spot. Like look at the food bank he's got, look at the gold coming on in. And B is pushed off of gold once again. Does have a sacred site, but that's it, right? Beastie's got five relics. He's got really good control of the gold vein, although he's lost that gold vein, it's just been expired, but he's got gold vein here. Still four thousand odd, three thousand five hundred, and could mop this up as well, and that's gonna be massive. Now, of course, the miners do have some passive generation of gold, but it's nothing to be, like, too crazy about. Like, it will help him, but ultimately, I think at this point, late game, you'd probably prefer the free units of bombards. That's a lot of Janissaries. So, cavalry, soft up, out of the question at this point. A lot of villages on the, on the west side. If that gets exposed and spotted, that could be problematic. But BC, he's confident of pushing out a bit of a death ball of army, but more importantly, even if he loses his army, like he's going to be able to replace it in a, in a really quickly. Like he's got all the upgrades, all the blacksmith upgrades. Got plenty of food, plenty of gold coming up. Oh, he spotted it. Oh no. Oh no, these villagers. There's no way escaping. There's no way out of that. It'll buy him some time. B. But yeah, that's I mean, he could just mine as much gold as he can and sacrifice the villagers. I think they're kind of dead anyway. He's going to split up into two groups. Grouping down in the middle. Does have a culverin that help deal with some of the siege, but Sabai might dive on top of that. Oh, just sending a couple of archers. Oh, God, this village is peppered with arrows. Sabai heading on the right side. Maybe another big push coming for B. Down the middle this time. Gonna stone wall up here, Beastie. I like that approach. Gonna narrow everything down down the middle, and I mean, he feels confident about his late game, and it makes a lot of sense. He's getting three premium units, five bombards, five great bombards. It's gonna be tough here for B to push that back. It's got covering and four springles, but even then, it's probably not enough. He's villagers going right through the heart of the Ottomans' economy. Well, Donta's being dragged though by the elite Sabai. Oh, oh no, he's lost a couple. Of, oh god, he lost a covering for free and a spring. Oh, that's massive. Like, yeah, that that's just huge. I mean, that that puts him in such a bad spot. Magnol possibly deploys. No, backing away for now. Jam throws getting a couple of hits, but the bombards, if they go on top of the Mangadals, it could be devastating. Went for the jam throws anyway. Got some good value. Sabai diving on in. They'll be cleared out by the Donzos, no doubt about that. Janthor is killing some villagers on the right side. It's like Beastie, he's heading on back and just recuperating, recovering. Oh god, another group of villagers. Yeah, B, B is losing a lot. Now you can see the difference in gold income, right? I mean, you might consider setting up trade. Beastie, like he's got stone walls now coming up. So he'll be able to protect it. Whether he needs it or not is another question. I don't think he needs it just yet. Sooner, soon he might, he might. I tell you who needs gold though, it's definitely B. You're really struggling on that front. Gonna try and take this keep down. Doesn't really solve that much to be fair, taking that down, but you might as well. Village is being brought to torch it down. 
those rounds. I think, yeah, I don't think he really gets this in the end. Okay, he's pushing down the middle. Sabahi, Janissary, Archers. That's a lot of meta. And six great bombards, I mean. Now, the big concern as well, the enemy often wants to target the meta, but he can't. There's six of them. By the time he kills the meta, his army would be dead. Oh, he's going to slap a Mangonel. That's a good start here for Beastie. If he takes it down, he does exactly that. Only one Mangonel remains. Four Springles for the Marlins. He takes a massive hit there. It takes actually a mill out in the end. And, well, only two Springles remain. Well, they just go down pretty quickly. Great Bombard is going to take the infrastructure down. I think B is going to be in trouble. Like, he does have a good number of military units, but... I mean, how do you push this number of Great Bombards? Like, they're just going to keep trickling on forward and against even uh, infantry blobs like this. I think there it is, ladies and gentlemen. B taps out Beastie. Comes with a great victory. B put so much pressure, so much aggression, but Beastie was able to hold. He's able to push on out with those great bombards. Hope you guys enjoyed this castle game on YouTube. Take care and see you next time.